In this video, I'm going to show how I used a pattern from a one piece of clay and I folded up the sides to create a box. I have done a little bit of an indentation on the bottom of each side where it kind of comes up and I've created a lid um, upside down in the actual pot and then it has a flange underneath and it fits inside nicely. This slab was rolled out off camera and now I'm just going to rib the surface. The ribbing helps to strengthen the slab a little bit and it helps to uh, just smooth out any imperfections that are in the surface. I am using a pattern which I have made. Um, I have these patterns in my room for my students. Um, I have different sizes and some different proportions, some that are more rectangular than square. And if I wanted this to be textured, I would have textured before I cut it out. I'm just trying to save a little bit of time today for this demo and doing with without texture. Students, if you are doing this for the textured slab set in Ceramics 2, again, just texture before you cut it out. So the idea behind this is that I'm going to be folding up and uh, creating the sides from these. Now, one of the easiest things that I can do to get this to go together is to bevel the sides. I could cut bevels with a knife, but instead I'm just going to use a serrated rib and angle as I do it, and that's going to create a little bit of a bevel. If you don't have a tool like this or you don't feel comfortable making a bevel with the scoring tool, you can certainly bevel it with a knife. Now for folding it up, I'm going to add some slip, which really is just some uh, water or you could use watered down clay. I just use water or maybe even vinegar with my students. So I get slip in the scoring. And then I'm going to, as I lift, I'm going to press those beveled corners together. Making sure that the top edge meets. Oh, and by the way, I should have mentioned this slab um, is still plastic, but it's on the stiffer side of plastic because I wanted to have it be able to support itself here without too much problem. And you don't want it to dry so much that it'll crack. Now, here I'm going to just push together the seam. I could use a roller. I could use a rib but I just want to make sure that this seam is nicely embedded into itself. And here I'll just use a rib. So I have those embedded. Now I need to get a coil in each of the corners. So I'm going to put a coil in each of the vertical corners. I don't need anything in the bottom because all that clay was folded. There are no seams in the bottom. It's just the seams of the corners that I need to take care of and put the coil in. Thank you. 
Okay, I have the coils laying in there and now I'm going to blend. I like to use one of these uh, wooden tools. It's a Kemper tool. Occasionally I might dip the end of it in water so it can help smooth. Now the most important thing when you're blending is hold the seam with your opposite hand. If you don't hold a seam when you put a coil in, chances are that you're gonna damage it and maybe blow the corner out. So I like to blend that entirely, both sides. Add the coils in there. Now I'm going to smooth it a little bit with a larger rounded end of a tool. And again, I'm supporting it on the outside so I don't create any stress and blow out the seam. So I have my little boxy type slab form. This could be uh, made into a lidded pot, it could be rounded, it could be made into a cup, a larger version could be made into a teapot. Um, I will show you another possibility uh, that you could do is right here. If we push up on the middles of each of the sides, it creates a nice little kind of foot area. So it has a bit of a, a nice little chubby quality to it and almost uh, like a leg. This is what I was trying to indicate on this pattern with that, showing that it could bump up. Of course, you don't have to. I just wanted to show that it could. Okay. And then I am going to stretch out the sides a little bit more and belly it. So I've stretched sides in a lot of different videos, whether it's a cylinder or teapot, whatever it may be, you can definitely add a little volume and stretch it out uh, while it's still somewhat plastic. Now, if you wanted to make something like this into a cup, I would recommend that you don't keep it straight, but you round it. Um, we could give that just a little bit of a flare right now anyway, even if it's not gonna be a cup. And I'd like to show you how I could make a lid. Okay. So this is a little trick that I also learned this uh, years ago from Sandy Parentosi. Um, I'm going to wet the surface of the opening and then I'm going to set a paper towel down. Now that gives me a nice little outline uh, of the inside of it so I can make a flange to go on the inside or I could also use that to cut the exterior of the lid out. What I can do right here is to cut the outside of the lid, I'm just going to set it upside down. I'm going to try to get 
try to draw it a little bit bigger. So that is a little bit bigger than my opening. Now, here's a little trick. If I wanted to create like a nice little domed lid, and I can always trim this to be a little bit more precise later, I'm going to use one of the baby ribs and I'm going to just take this lid and I'm going to press it gently on the interior. So this lid is actually upside down right now. Okay, so I now have the lid kind of sunken in there. And now, going back to this, this showed me the opening shape. So I'm going to make a little slab flange that will fit into that shape. And I'm going to just cut a strip fairly evenly. I may have to put a couple strips together because this might not be enough clay to wrap around. I'm going to bend it at the corners. And I need it to be just a little bit smaller than, oh, and then the opening because I need to make sure it will positively fit inside. And then as these two sides come together, I will overlap them like so. Okay, I think that is close enough. Now I'm going to score. And slip, blend this together. Okay, this is going to fit upside down on the little dome part, so I'm going to put a little bit of a bevel on this because the dome. It, it, this is going to fit up inside of the dome a little bit and uh, I don't want it to have a totally flat edge I want it to fit up inside the dome so I'm going to score that let's bring this back over so this will fit up inside of here Before I stick this on, I'm just going to peek in here. Yep, I just wanted to make sure that that fit. Okay, my lid has stiffened up a little bit and I'm going to flip it over, but I'm going to put a little piece of paper towel in there, which will be a little support that will help me to pick it up. Um, I want to make it look a little bit more even from the top because when I pushed it in, it doesn't look entirely even. And uh, I'm just going to do a little trimming.
Okay, I've cleaned up the edge with uh, a couple of tools. I used a vegetable peeler and a rib. And then I'm just gonna dip my fingers in a little bit of water and smooth that out. Going to add a little knob to the top that is reflective of an upside down version of the bottom. I just pinched it. I know I've mentioned it in other videos, but one thing to think about is when you're designing a knob is to create an undercut so your fingers can actually reach under a fatter part that's on top and you can grasp it without dropping it. And that's how I created a little slab box from a folded pattern.